Hello everybody and welcome to the video. In today's video, we are going to see the PhD scholarships or fellowships available in India. So this video is going to be useful for all the PhD aspirants out there, whoever wants to avail a fellowship or a scholarship and you want to do PhD in India, then this video is definitely for you. So do watch the video till the end because we are going to talk about different fellowships. What is the eligibility criteria for these fellowships? Whether is there an exam? for it and what are the uh, different sections in the examination and what is the stipend that you'll be getting. So all of that details will be covering in this particular video. So do watch the video till the end. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. So first and foremost, we are going to talk about the CSIR Net UGC JRF, right? So what is this examination? This examination is conducted by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR, and we're going to see all of these features in this uh, particular examination. That is, who is it applicable for? So it is applicable or uh, once you clear the CSIR UGC net examination, you can apply in universities, in the IITs, postgraduate colleges, government research establishments in industrial firms and other recognized uh, institutions. So you can apply for a JRF position to all of these and you can avail the scholarship there. And uh, later on, you can convert it into your PhD as well. Right? So, that, so it's a, uh, applicable for all of these institutions. Now, thirdly, we are going to see the eligibility criteria. Correct. So the eligibility criteria, especially for the what are the courses, so, uh, which course if you've finished, which of these courses can you apply for CSIR net UGC, right? So first and foremost, it can either be BS, that is Bachelor's of Science, which is a four years program, or it can be BE, that is Bachelor's of Engineering or Bachelor's of Technology, or it could be Bachelor's of Pharma, it could be MBBS or Integrated BSMS or MSc, right? So these are the different courses. Um, uh, candidates who have finished these courses, either of these courses can apply for this particular examination, right? So that is with respect to the courses. Secondly, what is the uh, what is the marks that you should have got? So you you need to have at least uh, fifty five percent aggregate in uh, in the in the courses that you finish, either it's uh, UG or PG. But there is also a reservation of fifty percent. That is. Uh, the candidates belonging to SCST community physically or visually handicapped. So these students uh, have to get an aggregate of 50% or above, right? So this is with respect to the eligibility. Now, thirdly, moving on to the features of this particular uh, scholarship or fellowship, right? So first and foremost, it's valid for a period of two years only, right? So before the completion of these two years, you should have availed for the scholarship or the fellowship or uh, after uh, the two years, your fellowship will lapse, right? So that is the first and foremost feature. Secondly, this exam is generally conducted twice in a year. So this is what has been happening all throughout, but because of COVID, there are a few changes and there's a merging of these, uh, you know, both of these examinations. So, yes, but generally this examination is conducted twice a year and there is an upper age limit as well. So, it is 28 years. Um, 28 years is the upper age limit for this examination but of course there is reservation as well there is a reservation of uh, 5 years for candidates belonging to SCST physically and visually handicapped as well as women candidates right so for these uh, category of people there is a relaxation of 5 years that is 28 plus 5 years secondly there is also reservation of 3 years for OBC candidates right so that is with respect to your age limit that's the upper age limit. 
Next, uh, what we are going to talk about is the examination itself. That is, what are the subjects that are there? Or what are the uh, courses or the sections that you can take uh, while giving the net examination? First is chemical sciences. Second is earth, atmosphere, ocean and planetary sciences. Third is the life sciences. Next is mathematical sciences or physical sciences, right? So these are the different subjects that's available uh, for giving the net examination. So according to your specialization, you can choose which paper you want to give, right? So the exam in itself, it's called the National Eligibility Test or the NET examination. Now let us see about this exam itself. First and foremost, it's a single MCQ paper, right? So it's a multiple choice question. That is, it's an objective paper only. It consists of three parts, right? So part A, part B and part C. So part A is general science and research aptitude. Part B is conventional MCQ from your subject, the, the subject that you have chosen. And part C is the application based questions from your subject, right? So these are the three different parts in uh, the examination. And of course, you do have negative marking as well. So if at all you answer correctly, it's fine. But if you're uh, answering it wrong, there is also negative marking in this examination, right? So the next, um, next feature that we're going to talk about is the stipend. What is the stipend of this fellowship, right? So first is you will get uh, rupees. If you've cleared the examination and you're availing this fellowship, then you will get rupees 31,000 per month for the first two years of your fellowship. And you'll also get an annual contingent grant of rupees 20,000. That is, um, you know, whatever uh, expenses that you have regarding your research or your project, you can claim it in here. Third is that you, after the completion of two years, you can convert it into SRF net, right? So after completion of JRF, two years of JRF plus, you should be a registered PhD to avail the SRF fellowship, right? So uh, so there are uh, also students who do only JRF and they don't, uh, you know, register for PhD. So such students cannot take the SRF ship, right? So if at all you want the SRF, then you should have registered for PhD as well. And for SRF net, the stipend is rupees 35,000 per month, right? So this is uh, with respect to the CSIR uh, net UGC examination or JRF fellowship, right? So the second fellowship we are going to talk about is the DBT Junior Research Fellowship, that is the DBT JRF. What is DBT JRF? So this uh, particular examination that is conducted uh, by DBT, it is called the BET exam or Biotechnology Eligibility Test. So this particular test has two categories, that is once you uh, complete the examination, the results will be um, among two different category lists, right? So first is the category one. So in this uh, particular list, all the candidates who have been selected in category one, they can take up PhD program. And the uh, people who have cleared or who have been listed in the category two, they can uh, be appointed in any DBT uh, sponsored project as a JRF and uh, these candidates, that is the candidates listed in category two, they are not entitled for fellowship from the DBT JRF program, right? So these are the two categories that will be available once you clear the BET examination. According to your cutoff, you will be put in either of these categories, right? So that is with re uh, respect to the examination in the category. Second is management, right? So this, uh, uh, this examination is... Um, uh, managed by DBT HRD project and management unit that is DBT HRD PMU is what they call it. It is also managed by the regional center of biotechnology which is uh, present at the national capital region right. So this is uh, with respect to the administration for this particular fellowship. Next we'll talk about the eligibility. So eligibility you can either be masters or bachelors or masters. So in bachelors you can be a BTEC 
बीई बी टेक और एम बी बी एस ओनली दीज थ्री कोर्सेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ बैचलर्स राइट बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ मास्टर्स यू कैन यू यू शुड एज अ फिनिश्ड एम एस सी और एम टेक एम बी एस सी एम फार्मा इंटीग्रेटेड एम एस सी और इंटीग्रेटेड एम टेक सो सिंस दीज बैचलर्स डिग्रीज आर एज अ फोर ईयर्स और मोर देन फोर ईयर्स ऑफ बैचलर्स डिग्री और यू शुड हैव फिनिश्ड मास्टर्स राइट सो this is in terms of the courses that you must have completed in order to give the bet examination next is uh, the students who are yet to appear for their final uh, examination final semester examination or their results are being awaited they can also apply and write this particular bet examination next is about the marks so the minimum um, uh, minimum marks that uh, is required for eligibility to apply for bit examination is 60% right uh, but for um, sc st or differently abled candidates there is a reservation of 55% right so that is with respect to marks next is the age limit like what is the age limit the age limit is up to 28 years of age for a uh, general category but uh, for the sc st or differently abled or the women candidates the age limit is 33 years and it is 31 years for the obc that is the non creamy layer of obc candidates right so that is with respect to the upper age limit for uh, jrf position next is the exam pattern right so how does the exam uh, typically look so the exam has two sections section a and section b right so in section a you'll have 50 compulsory mcq so all of the mcqs uh, that are there should be attempted by the students that will there's be 50 questions so it will be a 10 plus 2 level uh, of questions and the subjects will include general science mathematics chemistry general aptitude analytical quantitative ability and general biotechnology right so these will be the exam these will be the subjects that will be included in section a and uh, with respect to the marks for every correct answer there will be plus 3 but there will also be a negative marking of one mark for every incorrect answer right so that is with respect to section a now let's move on to section b so section b has 150 multiple choice questions and everything is related to biotechnology only so the students are expected to attempt only 50 questions out of these 150 questions that are available and marks again it is the same as section b that is for every correct answer it's a plus 3 and every incorrect answer will be a negative marking of 1 right so that is with respect to the exam pattern so we just uh, finished the dbt jrf fellowship right the next fellowship that we are going to see is j g e e b i l b i l s now what does this particular examination stand for so it it stands for joint graduate entrance examination for biology and interdisciplinary sciences right so let us see uh, in detail about this examination so this examination is conducted by tifr of ncbs right and there are various participating institutes so if at all you want to apply for phd in any of these institutes then you can give this particular examination and uh, you can take up the phd position out there now what are those participating institutions right so first and foremost is the so the, these are the lists of the participating institutions uh, for j g e e b i l s so first and foremost is actric mumbai so which stands for advance center for treatment research and education in cancer this is the particular website that you can go and look at so you can take the help of this uh, particular link to see what are the researches that's going on and if anything interests you at actric right so that is with respect to actric second is ashoka university and this is the website for ashoka university third is the bose institute kolkata and this is the website for bose institute which is situated at kolkata the next is center for human genetics which is uh, situated in bangalore and this is the website that is www.chg 
www.rs.in next is indian institute of uh, science education and research that is iiser so there are different iiscrs uh, throughout india and these are the iiscrs that are participating in this particular examination mm, that is iiscr bairampur iiscr um, ICER Kolkata, ICER Pune, ICER Tiruvananthapuram and ICER Tirupati, right? So these are the different uh, institutes or ICER institutes that are participating in this particular examination. Next is in Institute of Mathematical Sciences in Chennai. Um, the next is the Institute for Stem Cell Research, uh, Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine, Bangalore. And the website is instem.res.in. Next is Manipal School of Life Sciences. And this is the uh, this is the link, website link for Manipal. Next is National Brain Research Center, Manesar. And uh, the website link is nbrc.ac.in. Next is NCCS, that is National Center for Cell Science Pune. Right next is NIBG, that is National Institute of Biomedical Genomics, Kalyani. And the website is nibmg.ac.in. The next institute is NII, that is National Institute of Immunology, which is situated in New Delhi with this uh, website address. Right. The next institute is, of course, um, National Institute of Science, Education and Research, Bhuvaneshwar, that is NICER. And the next is Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata. Next is Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, that is TIFR. So there are three different TIFR um, institutions. One is DBS Mumbai, that is Department of Biological Sciences, TIFR, which is situated in Mumbai. Second is NCBS, that is National Center for Biological Sciences, uh, TIFR, that is situated in Bengaluru. And there is also TIFR that is situated in Hyderabad, right? So these are the different institutes uh, which are participating in this party for this particular examination. So if at all you clear uh, this examination uh, and you want to apply for PhD in any of these institutes, then you have to go to the institute website and apply from there, right? So this is a separate process and it, it, it differs from institute to institute about the process as well. So it's important for you to go to these websites and then check out the check out what the procedure is. right? So this is with respect to the participating institutes. Now, what, what are the courses that is available once you uh, clear uh, JGEE, BILS, right? So, first and foremost is PhD. Second is integrated MSc and PhD. Now, with respect to PhD, right, all the institutes, um, whichever we have talked about previously, all of them uh, have the PhD option except for NIBMG, right? The next is integrated MSc. So integrated MSc PhD, which is uh, available at TIFR, all the institutes of TIFR, all the institute of ISA, uh, the Bose Institute as well as NIBMG, right? So these are the um, institutes for which integrated MSc and PhD is available. Next, let's talk about the eligibility. The eligibility for applying for PhD, right? So you should have finished either MSc or M Pharma, MTech, MBBS, or BDS. But in the case of integrated MSc PhD, you uh, should have finished either BSc, BE, or BTech, BBSc, or B Pharma, right? So these are the courses that you should have finished. Right, so this is with respect to JGEE, PILS. The next examination that we are going to talk about is ICMR JRF, right? So ICMR stands for Indian Council of Medical Research and uh, this particular fellowship, right? So there, there are 150 students who will get uh, this fellowship every year and uh, 120 Mm, among them are for life sciences and 30 are for social sciences, right? And there'll be two merit lists, uh, two separate merit lists, one for life sciences and one for social sciences will be released. And this fellowship has a validity, validity for six months only. So unlike the other fellowships that are, which, which is valid for two years, ICMR JRF fellowship is valid only for six months. That is within the six months, you will have to avail the fellowship or else it will get lapsed. 
the, so apart from these uh, 150 students for whom the fellowship is available there are there will also be 100 students who uh, can be selected for the jrf position with icmr funded projects only and this is uh, for a validity of 2 years unlike the 6 months for jrf next is we are going to talk about the emoluments so in terms of emoluments right one is salary and the other is contingency fund right so salary is rupees 31000 per month of salary second is the contingency fund is rupees 20000 per annum right so after the completion of 2 years of jrf the students are eligible to uh, apply for srf after finishing 2 years of jrf right so that is with uh, respect to emoluments and the duration of the fellowship next is let's look at the eligibility right so in terms of eligibility you should be a uh, either a post graduate in basic sciences or you should be a post graduate in professional course right so that is the requirement for icmr jrf next is the age limit So the next uh, topic we are going to see is the age limit. The upper age limit for ICMR JRF is twenty eight years, but there is a five years of relaxation for these students that is SC, ST, physically handicapped, and the female candidates. And there is a three years relaxation for the OBC category. Right. So that is with respect to age limit. The next is the examination in itself. So what is the examination? Uh, that will be given for icmr jrf the examination will continue for a duration of 2 hours and um, there are there are different sections to this examination the different sections are section a which is aptitude section b is life sciences and section c is social sciences so according to your uh, specialization whether it's life sciences or social sciences you will be giving that particular paper but section a is common to both the candidates right so it's because it uh, is it 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 is uh, it tests your aptitude knowledge there will be 50 questions from these areas that is scientific phenomena in everyday life general knowledge in sciences and common statistics right so this is with respect to section a section b life sciences there will be 100 questions out of which 75 should be attempted and even in social sciences there will be 100 questions out of which 75 must be attempted so the candidate will either be giving section b or section c that is uh, with respect to the sections next let us talk about the marking scheme so for every correct answer there will be a addition of one mark and for every wrong answer there will be a deduction of 0.25 marks right so that is with respect to the examination of icmr jrf now we have finished four fellowships let us now move on to the next fellowship that is available in india so the fifth fellowship is the dst inspire fellowship that we are going to talk about so what is this dst inspire inspire stands for innovation and science pursuit for inspired research the eligibility for this particular um, particular fellowship is that you should be a rank holder that is you should be a first rank holder in your pg right so you can be of basic or applied sciences what are the basic or applied sciences in the field of engineering pharmacy agricultural sciences or veterinary sciences or any other basic and applied sciences and another uh, mandatory requirement is that uh, this particular college or the institute that you are graduating from it has to have minimum of 7 students in that particular course and there should be a minimum aggregate of 70 percentage of marks of all the students in that particular course right so that is another uh, mandatory requirement uh, if you want to avail the inspire fellowship now the second eligibility is you can be a rank holder at a graduate level as well so if you are a graduate or a post graduate from the medicine department then you are uh, eligible to apply for dst inspire fellowship and you should be a rank holder as well now what is the fellowship itself the fellowship is available for a duration of 5 years till you complete your phd right so that is with respect to dst inspire fellowship the sixth a uh, fellowship that we are going to see is women scientist scheme a also called was a right 
so in was a what happens is it is from uh, the dst right and it's for all the women scientists and technologists who want to do research in basic or applied sciences and they are returning from a career break right so th these are the features and this uh, particular fellowship is for a period of 3 years right so these are the features of uh, was a fellowship now what are the disciplines uh, uh, that the women can apply from so the different disciplines are physical and mathematical sciences chemical sciences life sciences earth and atmospheric sciences or engineering technology so these are the different disciplines next is about the eligibility so the eligibility you can see in this particular figure for was a as well as was b so we'll be covering was b in our next point for but for both of these the qualifications uh, if you are already a phd holder and you are availing this particular fellowship for uh, taking forward your research then your uh, fellowship per month will be 55000 if you are a mphil mtech m pharma or mbsc uh, candidate it will be 40000 and your if you are an msc candidate or applied sciences mbbs btech or equivalent uh, then you are uh, eligible for a stipend of rupees 31 thousand right so these are the different fellowship options that is available and next let us talk about the age limit right so here uh, there is both a lower limit as well as an upper limit because we already talked about that this uh, particular scheme was open for women who have taken a career break so yes the minimum uh, age limit for applying for this particular fellowship is 27 and the maximum age limit or the upper age limit is 57 years and there will be a relaxation in the upper age limit uh, for for 5 years for sc st obc and physically challenge candidates right so this is with respect to the age limit both upper as well as lower age limit now next moving on to the next fellowship that is women scientist scheme uh, b that is was b so here as well the features of this particular fellowship is that uh, the women candidate should be into science and technology interventions which will help the societal benefit so in this particular uh, was b program the project or the proposal has to be developed by the candidate itself and this particular project has to be um, you know should contain all of these features that it, it has to have a sustainable income generation or it should lead to an appropriate reduction in drudgery or it has to enhance the quality of life or it has to build or it is encouraged that the project that you are giving for proposal it has to be of capacity building of women at the grassroots levels right so these are the um Uh, these are the few features that is being expected from the proposal research proposal that you will be giving right the next is about the eligibility so the eligibility we already saw in the previous uh, uh, you know was a program itself so it's the same for was a and for was b where you have three different qualifications and the amount uh, per month that will be available right so that is with respect to eligibility and the stipend right so this was our seventh uh, fellowship that we talked about the last fellowship uh, for today is the gate now what is gate gate is graduate aptitude test in engineering and there is also gate financial assistanceship that is being given uh, for the students so uh, for phd students that is if you are going to enter into phd through your gate uh, fellowship then you have the fellowship for a period of 5 years and if you are a jrf um, you can be a jrf for 2 years with a stipend of 31000 rupees per month and after completion of 2 years and proper review of your project etc you can be a srf with a, a monthly stipend of rupees 35 thousand right so that is with respect to uh, you know joining phd after your gate fellowship now what is the eligibility for this particular examination so you can be either uh, studying in your third or your higher years of any undergraduate degree program so this particular um, eligibility also comes with all of these courses that is you can be either be btech be pharma it can be br 
can be BSc research or uh, BS, which is a four years course. It can be Farm D, can be MBBS or BDS, can be MSc, MA or MCA, can be integrated ME or MTech, can be BSc, BA or BCom. Right. So these are the different courses that uh, you, if if you finish these courses or if you're about to finish these courses, then you can apply for this particular examination. Or if at all, um, not just that you are uh, doing these courses, but you've completed any of these courses, that is engineering, technology, architecture, science, commerce, or arts, if you've completed any of these courses as well, you are eligible to apply for GATE Fellowship. Right? So we have... So with this, uh, we come to the end of the list as well as the discussion. So as you all know, these are the eight fellowships we have seen for today. And uh, I'm sure this particular information was quite useful for all of you, for all the PhD aspirants out there who are looking to get a fellowship. And when you want to do PhD in India, then these are the different fellowships that's available. So I wish all the viewers all the very best for your PhD journey. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.